um, you know, don't dream it's over. They come to build a wall between us. Don't let them win. Uh, sometimes you imagine a scenario where the character in the song is having an experience and it's somewhat come from the day that you're in and somewhat from just finding a musical space that brings these ideas to life. So, um, but originally written on the piano, which is, and in the key of E, uh, which is interesting because it became a guitar song the next day when I went home and did a demo. The demo was actually available on a, on a uh, Rarities record that was released not that long ago. It's very much close to how it ended up on with the Crowded House version, except that the snare drum was a matchbox and I think the uh, bass drum was a, was a rubbish tin on my demo. Uh, and it was without Mitchell's organs, organ solo. So, um, well, so it, yeah, did, did I understand this correctly? It sounded like you were in this other room while everybody else was out in the other part of the house, and yeah, the, and lyrics were these darker lyrics were flowing from you at the point. So, where was the? Did you already have the the um, the musical context for those for those? words or was it happening in equal time or how how did that come about well that one was happening i mean as far as i can remember that one was happening in pretty much um you know the same time as the music i i would have had a pad and a piece of paper and mm. uh, and a pen and um i was just playing the same bit of music over the verse came first um what ha often happens with me I do remember coming up with the line, you know, my possessions are causing me suspicion, but there's no proof and thinking, oh, that's, I like that. That's, I don't normally run words together at that pace. And I thought, yeah, that's a good line. And I was going to ask you about that. Something. I was going to ask you about that line actually, because it's not an obvious line. No, well, I sort of, I think there's certain points in your life where you start to look around and, and you look at the decisions you've made and the things you do. And we accumulate possessions in our lives and the, um, there's always that dichotomy about whether they actually are, they obviously help in a lot of ways. Uh, they're fun to have these things built up around you and they end up in storerooms, half of them, because you get too much of them. But, um, and then you also have this idea in your head in a pure sense that uh, not accumulating possessions, earthly possessions and being completely in the moment and, um, you know, being more aware of the people around you is actually there's a greater truth uh, involved, but you know, like, it's causing me suspicion, but there's no proof. So, you know, these are just ideas that um, that float around and, and you're not fully resolved about them. But you're also at the same time looking at the state of the world and going, well, I don't know, this, everything's an absolute mess, but what can I do about it? So, you know, you, you know that we will seek entertainment and escape. Uh, that much is extremely true of today as well. well so, you know, no nothing, question. We're all nothing's trying, changed. We're all trying to catch the deluge in a paper cup. That's for sure. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's another kind of overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, that's another amazing line, you know, because as I listen to the lyrics, there's tales of war and waste and all this. So as you were saying, there's all these forces that are flowing against us, trying to build a wall between us, but then they don't win. Don't let them win. So it's um it it Yeah. I'm and glad I, I put that line in there. <laughs> yeah. People have said, people have speculated that it, don't dream it's over might mean one of two things, you know, don't dream, it's over. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if I ever write a song called It's Over, you can <laughs> you can probably predict that I'm, that I'm in a really dark place. <laughs> well, so what do you, what does, I don't want to ask you to be literal because I that's the wrong question, but don't dream it's over. You have all these forces that are coming and attacking you and don't let them win. So don't dream it's over. Like you said, don't don't dream it's over. But don't dream it's over. What does that mean to you? Well, I, I would much prefer to, to see it as a, I mean, I'm always attracted to double meanings anyway. So I'm happy when people get things wrong. It, um, it, I don't really want to be too literal. Uh, maybe it's the way it just suits me not to be. I like some songwriters that are very literal, but I don't want to have to concentrate on getting a song when I first hear it. I like it to kind of come in through the back door a little bit and kind of catch me by surprise and sometimes get it. I don't even know what it's about, you know, hence the, the, the way that people use the same song for um, weddings as they use for funerals on many occasions. Um, I was just hearing about the Hallelujah song um, on a podcast recently and they were saying it gets used at funerals and it gets used at weddings and 
you know, in the, if you listen to the lyrics, you know, why on earth on either would it be really appropriate? But, yeah. yeah. Um, people, and I like that about songs, you know, like the, the non-literal interpretation. Um, but for me, Don't Dream It's Over is, is a very much a hopeful, uh, positive um, statement. Um, you know, don't start to believe that uh, there's no hope, I suppose. And um, that's the first step in addressing things in your own personal life that are not right. And it's the first step in the world addressing, um, you know, an acknowledgement that there is hope uh, or, you know, an affirmation that there is hope. So I think that's, you know, you don't think about these things at the time. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, this will, you know, people will use this as a an affirmative anthem in years to come. You don't have any of those thoughts in your head, but I've been so delighted that it has been used in a lot of different contexts as an affirmation of um, hope. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that the mysterious journey that songs make is um, uh, just super grateful for it. Did you immediately know after you wrote that song that that one in particular was special? I don't, I think I was really into it. You know, like I made a, a pretty nice demo of it and I knew that it was, that it had something um, in, in it, but it, not, not overly, I'm not over and above others that I was working on. Whatever you're working on, you sort of, in order to finish them, you have to really love them at some point. You have to yeah. really, 